I'm reading the comments here and people keep bringing up Sam Darnold. And I'm going to explain right now for all and why yeah. Sam Darnold just wouldn't work for the 49ers. And I'm not even going to get into him as a player because I don't really like Sam Darnold. People bring up the Ryan Tannehill, Adam Gase comparison. I've said it before, Ryan Tannehill and Adam Gase, when Ryan Tannehill was the quarterback, they were a playoff team in Miami. The problem was Ryan Tannehill got hurt, but he had a winning record with Ryan Tannehill as a quarterback. And the roster wasn't that great there too. <laughs> and so... The thing is with Ryan Tannehill also, the only reason people thought he was bad was one, he got injured, and two, Miko Grimes just talked about Ryan Tannehill like he was like Nathan Peterman. Like Miko Grimes ruined Ryan Tannehill's reputation. Also, his numbers were like mediocre. Not he bad, was, not he was still middle of the road, though, right? Yeah, he middle, was, he was player. middle of the road quarterback. Player. Yeah. Yep, yep. He was a good player. And so now that his situation got better, but so Darnold has never played anywhere near Ryan Tannehill's level and never played anywhere near That's his true. level in the NFL thus far. That's true. The other thing with Darnold is that he, this is year three, right? So now you've got the fourth year. You're probably not going to take the fifth year option because he's totally unknown. So you're going to bring him in here. The question is, he's taken so many hits. In, with the Jets, his I mean, his most – his mechanics are wacky, wacky. His accuracy is so off, like inconsistent. He doesn't see things a lot, which means you're going to have to rebuild him. If you're going to have to rebuild him, can he come in and learn this offense and beat Nick Mullins, who's been in this offense for four years? Let's say that's where you go. So you move away from Jimmy and you bring in Darnold Nick Mullins. I don't know if he would beat Nick Mullins in training camp, which you means that you're waiting four weeks or five weeks to you start would. him. Then you start him five weeks. You have 11 games with a win-now team to make a decision at quarterback before you have to re-sign him again. It just makes and, no and sense. And Kyle would come in there if he didn't beat out Nick. He would have to be better than Nick. Mullins. Same thing with Jimmy Garoppolo. But he would have to do it from day one, right? Yes. And that's yep. the thing. It's going to take him time. And they don't have time for him. This roster doesn't have time. It would be a horrible fit. Yeah. I, I just don't like his his skill set that much. He's not He's not real fast. I mean, he's an improver. He's not particularly um, a stickler for the details the way that Kyle Shanahan would want his quarterbacks to be. He kind of just like, all right, let me wing it. That's that's the way I see Sam Darnold. And he loses all the time. So the, the attraction to him, right, is that he's got kind of this ability to manipulate the pocket and move away and make funny body throws, right? That, yeah. That's a big attraction to him. But I don't – like when you look at guys who make like kind of weird arm angle throws, I don't think his arm is as good as any of those guys. No. When you're talking about like a Josh Allen or a Mahomes or a Rodgers. Like I think his arm is a little more floater than really driving. Like it's not – it's a better arm than anybody on the 49ers, but it's not a rocket. And then I just don't think he plays well within the process of their offense. Like we can rip Adam Gase and he deserves to be ripped. Right. But that Jets roster is pathetic. So I don't know how people expect him to coach brilliantly with a terrible roster. Right. McCagnan ruined that team. That's one. And then the other thing with uh, Gase is that we can blame him. But Joe Flacco was having more success within what was going on in that offense because a lot of times Sam Donald's not seeing what's happening. Yes. Okay, so th I think that's a good summation of why Sam Darnold isn't good and the Niners should avoid him. Vish and I are uh, in lockstep on that one. No way to Sam Darnold. Because not only is he not good, but you have to trade a draft pick for him. So you got to pay him, you got to trade a draft pick for him, and he's not going to beat out Nick Mullins. My thing that I would prefer to do, and I don't know if Vish agrees with me at all, but instead of trading a third or whatever it would take to bring in Darnold, I would give whatever it takes to sign Mitchell Trubisky. I don't think it would take much, like a, a million, one one year, one like a you know whatever Cam signed for. Uh, that that way, if he comes into camp and stinks, you can cut him. And if he doesn't, he can stay on the team as the second string quarterback, like Ryan Tannehill was in uh, in Tennessee. So my question for you is: You said that Sam Darnold definitely is at the next Ryan Tannehill, and made a good argument for why. My question, and I'm not pushing you in any direction. I'm just asking, is there any possibility that Trubisky could be the next Ryan Tannehill? And if not, why not? Okay, so real quick with Darnold, I I, I don't think he's bad per se. I just think he's an awful fit for the 49ers okay. in terms of where the why the contract and where the Niners are as a team and where he needs to be. He needs to go to a place where he can sit behind a veteran quarterback, Indianapolis ideally, or Pittsburgh. Um, and then going to Trubisky, I don't think there's any way he could be the next Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. Why do you came, say that? With a, why do you say that? Uh, Ryan Tannehill came into the NFL. You know, he played wide receiver in college, so his first years he wasn't as accurate. But by year two, year three, he could control the ball pretty well and throw it where he wants to. 
Mitch Trubisky has no control of the football. Absolutely no control. I've been watching him his entire career because, unfortunately, the Chicago Bears show up on my TV every Sunday because I live in the area. So I got to watch every Bears game. And, you know, it's really tough to watch. But Mitch Trubisky has zero control of where he's throwing the ball. I mean, we. I don't like Nagy. I think if Gase is bad, Nagy is equally as bad. And Gase went 10-6 and six in his first year. Nagy, Nagy went- worked in Gase. I think they're in the same tier of coach. I think they have a horrible offense. But to me, Trubisky has zero accuracy. Even if the throws are there, he can't make them. He, he can't control the ball at all. See, I don't see that when I watch him. I actually see a guy who has a pretty good arm. He completed 70% of his throws in college. He's in a bad offense. He completed 60% of, 66% of his throws in 2018 when he went to the Pro Bowl. Real quick, I understand you're, you're probably right and I'm probably wrong, but if you just indulge me. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky. Four years in Chicago, 46 games. His completion percentage is 63. His touchdown percentage is four. His interception percentage is 2.4. His quarterback rating is 86.1. Ryan Tannehill, six years in Miami, 88 games, 62.8 completion percentage, 4.2 touchdown percentage, 2.6 interception percentage, 87 quarterback rating. They threw the ball. Not not just one more, not just that. Yards per carry. Yards per carry. Tannehill. 4.9, 4.9, Mitchell Trubisky, 5.6. So there's there's a little bit of a dual threat aspect to them as well. That's it. I agree. I agree. And, you know, the way you presented it, it's not like a scenario. Like when you said Mitchell Trubisky, I was like, whoa, warning signs. But then you said, well, if you can get him for $1 million, you know, yeah. he and you just bring him into camp and you just see how he does because maybe you, you can pick up something decent there, then, yeah. okay, not a bad option that way. But – for me, because you're putting him from a, like basically from night and day scheme wise, you're taking him from the RPO quick passing game to Kyle Shanahan under center uh, play action, which I think could have a nice effect the way it has for Baker Mayfield. Yeah, I mean maybe, maybe, but I think Baker Mayfield at every point in his life has been a better thrower than Mitchell Trubisky. Like the one thing Baker Mayfield was coming out of college was accurate, and he's shown that with specific pass concepts, even with the Browns. He can really make throws that not a lot of guys can make. So, I mean, maybe I I scouted the hell out of Mitchell Trubisky when he came out of North Carolina. Yeah, I I can tell you why. I can't tell you why, but I just remember him having a really good arm. He completed 68% of his passes. Uh, He threw 30 touchdown passes and six picks. I thought he had the arm. To me, I don't know. To me, when I, when I see him, and you watch more of him, but I see a guy who's lost all confidence. Yeah, I in agree. A similar way that Alex Smith did when he was 25, 26. And to me, um, a good a good coach might be able to uh, save him. But I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. See so that. even, even yeah. with him, though, again, it comes back to the fact that the Niners are nowhere in the position to have a guy that you have to rebuild. Like this True. Is- Win, yeah. win, win now. Right. And I, I'm not saying like he's even like would be the long term answer. Like he right. would be he's- kind of an interesting project to to fiddle with while you're looking for the the right guy. Because right. all I'm saying is they may not be able to draft that guy this year, even though they want to draft that guy. 